What is up guys, this is RMD Tech and today we're going to be looking at whether or not the frequency of your RAM and the speed that it's running at really does affect Ryzen gaming. Now as you can see behind me I have a Ryzen 1800X, that was the flagship Ryzen processor when Ryzen was first released and so using that we're going to be testing at different sort of frequencies of the RAM what sorts of FPS and if we actually see a difference in FPS and then that way you guys can decide for yourselves how important you think the frequency of the RAM really is. So without further ado, how about we get into that video? Okay then guys, so we're going to quickly go ahead and jump into the BIOS so we can see what speed that our RAM is currently running at. Then we'll do a quick sort of baseline benchmark and then from there we'll move on and see exactly how we can sort of step up the frequency of the RAM and see what the performance difference is like. Okay then guys, so as you can see here, we are running an AMD Ryzen 7 1800X 8-core processor. And that is with 32GB of DDR4 in dual-channel memory mode. And as you, if you just look slightly further down the page, you can see we are running at 2133MHz, which is obviously pretty damn low for Ryzen. And so we're going to test out this very low base mark and then see how overclocking it improves our performance. Okay guys, so as you can see, here we are in the Apex Legends settings menu. So you can see exactly what settings I'm using for this benchmark. And I'm playing the game at high settings because, you know, we're running with a uh, GTX 1070 and an 1800X. So we should be able to handle it, especially considering we have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. So if we just... Oh, I've clearly left the uh, model details too low there, so we just bumped that up to high. Um, yes, yeah, so if we run this game, we will play it. This is actually going to be my first proper game of Apex Legends. Um, well, ever. So we're going to benchmark it using Fraps, check out our min-max average, and then we're going to benchmark a couple of other games, see how we go, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so we're not actually going to start benchmarking until we hit the floor. I feel like that's probably the fairest way to do things. Okay, and begin benchmarking. Okay, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is run GTA 5. That's a really good benchmark, so we can just sort of, it runs it through, it'll be exactly the same every single time, so we know we're going to guarantee get a really good benchmark in here. So we're just running it right here for the baseline, and then we'll be able to compare it against the different other frequencies of RAM later on. Okay, so our next step is recording City Skylines. And I know that might be a bit of a weird one, but it is incredibly CPU demanding just on its own. However, I've taken it up a notch because not only am I running it at the highest graphical settings, I've also got a bunch of graphics mods installed, and this city has 185,000 population. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just having a truck run around the city, and the camera's gonna follow it around, and essentially we're just gonna benchmark it that way. So, yeah, how about we, uh, we get into that? Okay, so obviously for the ultimate meme factor, we're going to be having to play some Crisis 3, which luckily I have a copy of. So what we're going to do is run through the first couple of minutes of the campaign, just benchmark it that way, because there isn't a built-in benchmark um, program as far as I'm aware. So we'll just run through a new game, uh, skip the tutorial, all of that sort of stuff, and see if, we, see if we can benchmark it properly that way. It's probably not the most scientific of all tests, however, let's be honest, since when has this channel been known for its scientific accuracy? Okay, so taking a look at the results, we can see that we had actually a really interesting mix there. So we had both, uh, what was it, Crisis 3 and Apex Legends are reaching well over 100 FPS average. And then we had, um, well, City Skylines, which was definitely a lot lower. However, that was to be expected. And GTA 5 was also interesting. It was much lower than I was expecting it to be at. So that's quite interesting. So what I'll do now is I'll essentially just go into the BIOS, bump up the RAM frequency, a preset, and then see how we then how we perform once we've done that. Okay, so here we are back in the BIOS, and what we're gonna do is go to the OC tweak, uh, tweaker? OC tweaker. No, I was right, OC tweaker. Why did I think that was wrong? Anyway, we're going to the OC tweaker tab, we're going to go to uh, profile one and change 2133 up to 2400. And then we're going to go over to exit and save changes and exit. So then when we boot into Windows, we should be running at a slightly higher RAM frequency, and we'll see if that sort of gives us any sort of FPS boost. It might not, it might, it might give us a significant boost, who knows, we'll find out soon enough. Okay then guys, so we've just finished our next set of benchmarks at 2400 megahertz, 
and it's safe to say we've seen a pretty consistent improvement across the board here. So we've seen sort of increases of maybe sort of 10 or in some cases sort of slightly lower, you know, city skylines that improved by 2 FPS, but it's still an increase in frames per second. And so what we're going to do is going to jump back into the BIOS, jump up again in terms of frequency, and then see if we can get even more performance out of it. Okay, so back again into the BIOS, and if we go back down, change the DRAM frequency, and this time let's try and bump it up to 2666. So we're going from 2400 to 2666. And then on our next time, we might sort of bump it up by a, might skip one and then go up to the sort of 3000 mark, maybe. We'll see how, the, we'll see how 2666 goes. So 2666 ended up being a little bit interesting in comparison to our previous two results. We actually haven't got a consistent increase in FPS like we did previously. Now that might just be due to some sort of margin, margin of error, however it could also be a case of certain games don't really actually benefit from having that much more RAM frequency. And so the games which, as you can see on the screen, didn't improve in their uh, FPS was both Apex Legends and Crisis 3. In fact, they both actually reduced in FPS, which is interesting. So it will be really interesting to see what happens which when we do what we are going to do next, which is jump back into the BIOS again and then boost ourselves up to 3000 megahertz. Okay, so here we are back in the BIOS. How about we bump ourselves all the way up to 3000 megahertz? Simple, just click, click, and then exit and saved. Okay, so I've just finished testing up the 3000 megahertz overclock. And so as you can see, we're kind of starting to hit a plateau. We're not really getting the sort of FPS boost we were originally getting at the beginning. And so what I propose we do now is perhaps sort of, rather than keep just going and going up to 3, 1, well, 31, 33 and so on, we just stick the overclock on auto, see what it takes us to, and then perhaps we can see if we get a higher or a lower sort of FPS boundary. And then we'll call it quits there and see, just see how it goes. So how about we get back to the BIOS? Okay, so that's interesting. The automatic mode has set us back to 2133. So essentially that means we don't really need to test auto because we've kind of done that already. But it's interesting that the automatic mode set us to that. So um, yeah, how about we have a look at the overall quick final results? Okay, so having a look at the general overview of the results, it's fairly clear, at least to me, that yeah, we, there was definitely some noticeable performance increases here. So I think at the most we saw about a 10 FPS improvement uh, going from 2133 megahertz in Apex Legends uh, at 119 FPS all the way up to 129 FPS at 3000 megahertz. Now, obviously, as we know, as we saw earlier, there was a lot of sort of going back and forth as we changed the RAM frequency. And so your mileage may vary in terms of sort of what speed you get and what FPS you get in corresponding. However, I think it's safe to say that yes, changing your frequency, the frequency of your RAM does definitely, well potentially, improve your FPS in games using Ryzen. However, it does seem to be sort of more focused on games which are CPU intensive rather than GPU intensive. So if your game is, isn't really being bottlenecked by your CPU, you may not see as much FPS improvements as if it were, so sort of games like uh, City Skylines as we saw, that was consistently getting improvements, whereas games like sort of GTA, that was kind of pretty much exactly the same the entire time. Um, so would I recommend you overclock your RAM? Yeah, probably, it's probably, you know, it's, it's usually not too difficult, as you saw me doing it right there, and it's also fairly safe to do, the chances of you sort of fucking anything up too bad is, is fairly low so I'm gonna give you the go ahead to go ahead and do that one so if you have any sort of further questions or comments please do leave that in the comment section down below otherwise I have been Robert and you have been fantastic and I will see you in the next video but wait I should probably mention I, I completely forgot if you want to support the channel and you want to help us out then please do look at the link for NordVPN in the video description down below it's a fantastic company and their VPN is next to none. They have over 5,000 servers across the planet and that is just absolutely fantastic for sort of helping you spoof your location and get past all those nasty geo restrictions and it also helps you protect yourself from all those online nasties. So if you are interested in their services or you want to help out the channel, do be sure to click the link in the video description. Anyway guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.